to continue in the mind of a man who has found some form of emptiness to point to we see that emptiness is not in the emptiness of the story the story is beautiful imagine the character in your story is living well it is experiencing life well but just now see that this character suddenly gets a feeling a sense of longing which is kind of unknown and it's telling it not to behave the same in the program it's as if something is pulling it away and it's as if your life is valuable before you even know it, of its value as if you can't know how valuable it is unless you walk and live and so you need to experience life with a very good quality guys this is important because that quality if it's from an innate source if it's from your being if it's from your knowing your inner knowing you can be untouched in this life you can walk untouched and in a sense you can also walk touched by every person you can you can you need to allow because if you limit your realities your imagination will find it hard because your energy needs to manifest it that way sometimes ideas need to come to you so the worst thing is calling your imagination imagination and chaining it up it's an abstract process that involves all moments of your experience perceive and as you perceive you remember many senses of openness that's it I can't really tell you what openness feels like it's just it's a sense of openness it's a sense of silence it's a sense of choice because you can now step into any form of noise and you're still calm because you hear that calm from silence you know so if you are curious about eternity and how consciousness perceives eternity you must look at what your idea of eternity and infinity is and see and see if you need it or not right now as i'm walking i'm seeing a sign that says is is satan real question mark and you know that question is going to make some little kids ask who's satan you know and that kid is going to have an effect based on the immediate ideologies given to it worse than drugs because the understanding of one has to become f- found in their own power in other words you need to realize how comfortable you are when you f- when you're in your own home when you're f- when you feel you're there when i'm alone with myself i i i can very quiet quite a lot of other ideas that i find are not mine because you find out your natural interests i mean even though i do talk about transparency but it's it's more of a simultaneous sense of awareness to experience So what that means is that I'm here and I'm not here. I'm having both those experiences to a greater sense of observance, but it is not something that I can speak it. I can't talk about. It. Man's reception is based on his awareness to what attention means in its awareness. And so that's the beginning relationship. But eventually you can reach a point that's very great. I mean, you go go read Vedic literature. I even have some form of my image my mind even has certain ideas which kind of slightly are pointed to but the capability of the mind is to take itself to a better creator so imagine if you were experiencing from your whole creation in other words the creator got experience from its creation so right now just as you are experiencing the creator is also experiencing what that means is not that you're in a part of a separate mind that's your view of it the creator is your reality what that means is that a snail on a tree might not know it's on a tree it might not know what the, how big the world is but it lives so you see that with with beings with biological beings who their vision is limited they must not try to make themselves like machines even though they can't be inspired by them 
We can be inspired by our own creation. And if man can be inspired by his own creation, I'm pretty sure God can too. And that's what's happening. Because we are divine attention to recognize that we were always the divine inspiration. And that's what divine pattern means. Because it's no one's pattern but your own. It's patterns that have meaning to you, not to anyone else, because you've seen them, you've been there, you've lived through there. You have looked through the eyes of all men, including all your experiences of anything. When you are honest with yourself, you access a sense of your core that gives you a more sense of stability. In other words, you become more grounded when you see why you're standing on the ground, why you're alive. And that's, that becomes meaningful. So a lot of the times, the spiritual path is your journey to go and find your greater meaning in life. And everyone goes through theirs. There's many methodologies here. But now humanity needs to have an organized and clear way of structuring it. So what that means is it's up to um, very detached and selfless people living in urban areas to in a sense bring forth a sense of existential peace in other words everyone exists we exist and everyone accepts in, that we're experiencing and so if we're experiencing if there's an experience who's the experiencer and so we, we cannot be in two spaces at once if we think we're only in one space do you see my mind? Do you see how I'm, I'm suggesting this? Because we're not utilizing our imagination the wrong thing. It's as if the, 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 your consciousness, that awareness that is you right now, this bubble of awareness you have, sphere of presence, it, it is resonating with other things which are instantaneously being it. What that means is when, when two separate things can be present in the same space, they both exist or they don't exist. Do you see this paradox? So this paradox is suggesting the understanding of the internal and external realities of man's own mind. Because internally, Mr. Within is not one that needs meaning. Mr. Within doesn't need a name. It knows. It doesn't need a name. And that is why you see it's important. We are we need to man needs to create bridges in which we can bring forth our appreciation. So if you are to give one lecture in your life to inspire people, give it about how much you appreciate life and how much you appreciate um, clarity. And speak about what clarity means to you. Every person needs to speak about what clarity means to them, but not in a convince them. We, we are not in the time of the Crusades. You know, we're not here to shove religion or science down people's throats. We're actually here to be calm and be still, not to shove anything, not to ask rash questions. It's like, I'm pretty sure an answer is revelation because it is raising your awareness and so revelation if it comes to you if if any form of extrasensory perception or psychic phenomena or any form of inspiration or a sense of the divine comes into your life or some form of god consciousness that is a synchronistic flow of just things happening and things going a certain direction it's because you're realizing where you need to be what that means is that we are we are simply a personality in a mind that is utilized by, by a consciousness that can, that can perceive in all, all realities. What that means is that consciousness is having a simultaneous experience of every line it draws to create pl new planes of understanding. So the planes would be, in a sense, the greater mind. You see, I don't want you to think of the mind, your greater mind, your future mind, or aliens and collective consciousness when I say collective consciousness I want you to think about that in the sense that the greater being that you're waiting for you feel that you are is everything it is the conceiver of existence and once you have felt yourself to be the conceiver of existence one who's creating the reality experience then you can become aware of your voice differently. You can become aware of how you're existing differently. You can see that layers can be conceived, but at the same time, we have layers which are not working with our own mind. Multidimensional design is not one where you're searching for a direct answer. 
but the direct experience is one that is observing all answers and that is where we want to flow towards in a sense with their ability and you have access to this you know I mean the most okay so if I was standing let's say here right and I, I came to a town I wouldn't know I would understand that asking another human being about their experiences is a very healthy activity because it makes both your life meaningful and the other person's life meaningful so in, in a lot of my talks I'm, I'm, I'm really opening up to the ears that are tuning in and what that means is I'm saying authentically that this is the expression here that this is how the fire burns and the fire cannot sin and the fire doesn't need to mean hell you know, I realized, wow, in, 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 in a lot of religions, which I was brought up with a, with a certain religious upbringing, there was talk about hell, fire, you know, and then light, you know. But then, right after we read this, I would see that I have fire in my fireplace, right? And what is fire? It's just, it's its, its own phenomena. So you cannot judge natural phenomena by naming it and then giving it your own value. That is ridiculous. The fact that we can even agree on things means that we can just focus on the same reality for a bit, but everyone is flowing through many forms of reality, many forms of idea. And so understanding becomes its great, the, the, the being's greatest stance against anything. Understanding. Your enemies hurt you, you have enemies, your, your life's about to be over. Increase your understanding about self. Because what is bad is that if you've been confused and you've made a mistake, you want to correct that confusion. If something is leaving your life based on your lack of ability, you want to be completely aware why it's leaving so you know why. So you want to be real with yourself. And being real with yourself means that no, you actually don't deserve anything. Realize that nobody needs to give you anything. Because even if they do, you're still in interpreting what that means to you when someone gives something to you. So what that means is you need to be self-sufficient and self-aware. And this is where it's more of a meditative thing because you're being aware of life around you but also right life within you. And the life within you, its presence is more observant of physical reality than physical reality is of itself. So please understand this. You, you might be in a physical playground right now and you might be like love is nice and the kids must hold hands and it must be nice but you also need the awareness of the gaze of a greater eye what that means is that just as the children are in the playground playing in their randomness and fun loving world what is happening is a greater gaze is looking the parents are seeing how the kids are doing and you know what what happens when a kid is, goes to a playground? What happens when a parent says, you know, why is the parent there? The parent wants to see their child to be in joy. Unless you're, you, you want some time to just sit down, that you can have that excuse as a parent, I'm sure, too. So, you need to make things real for yourself to a degree that if they break, you can still see the truth of their presence. What that means is that when a lot of the times people talk to me, and I notice this having this, my consciousness would not be acknowledging things verbally. In other words, not all shy people are shy. They're just simply more internally aware of how things are. They're more tuned into their internal reality. To get out of your shyness, you really have to tune into external reality. And that means is that you gotta let go of your sense of certainty in what you think you should or shouldn't do. In other words, you, want, you need to relax, right? So after some time, you see your mind is complex. What that means is I'm not constant, constant. I mean, I'm comfortable with these thoughts because I've had a, I, I'm, I'm always thirsty for this kind of talk because it's stuff that I just innately, my energy expresses itself. So what that means is that the way you communicate is in a sense opening up people to the energy you are. And if you communicate in a way that is not authentic, people are not seeing another version of you. They could, be, they could see a hallucination. They could see you as being a thief. They could see you as being a saint. They could see you as being a sinner. They could see you as being wealthy. They could see you as anything. And I see even animals can see me. Animals can see me as any, all sorts of shapes. So my immediate physical presence is in the mind of another, another object. Because they don't have an immediate experience. What's the difference between you and a clock? Your, your experience is based on not the handle of the clock moving. 
or based on what you're perceiving. But that's what I'm saying. This is where you need to allow your reality to blend into a consciousness that is integrative by nature, that is unified by nature. These talks that I'm talking about, guys, it's a sensitivity to your presence. It's not me shouting out, wake up, wake up. No, you are awake. Now use your, apply your knowing and apply your intuition and apply your sense of your greatest moment. <coughs> it doesn't matter if you're in a terrible scenario or not. It doesn't matter if we're walking on the Titanic or not, you know? If you have an amazing quality, even if you're walking in Titanic and your body's full of bliss, your quality of experience is very able and present, you don't realize you're afraid of death, so you don't need to walk. You, I mean, you don't need to run, you walk. You don't need to run, you walk. Our breath is very wise because it will show that just like how the Zen master said your cup when it's full you need another cup in a sense what the Zen master didn't tell that scientist is that when your cup is full at times and you're completely aware it's full then what pours is is your experience into another bowl so what that means is, in a sense, our, our source, our spark, is the hand pouring the water. And our end, in a sense, or our continuation, our, infinity, our eternity, is the shape of the cup. But once the shape of the cup is filled, once you see that you can completely experience everything in this reality, you have no other choice but to experience another reality, so you already are. It's like enlightenment just happens when your awareness is reaching to a point where you're re-experiencing yourself in, in, in a sense of emptiness, but at the same time with a sense of purpose that is not you. In other words, if the cup is full, you realize that once the brim of the cup is full and it pours into another form of container on holding the cup, it was never just the cup. That's what I'm saying. You are present in many realities, in many forms and shapes, which I'm going to somehow bring to linearity, but you must first understand that the non-linearity is there. Linearity should not be talked about without an awareness of non-linearity. Order should not be talked about without the concept of nature of chaos. And in a sense, your experience of your senses is up to you. Words are powerful because they allow us to have a sense of self-identity that can experience uh, different states of our multi-presence in different ways and in new ways. So we are in a sense, what is Mr. Within, what is me talking right now, is an experience between different states of being. So in other words, I'm simply looking at different things. That is why it's learning. That's, that's why if you constantly, if you believe life is a school and you're just constantly learning, eventually you see the lessons you're getting are showing you that you are not just this. Because that's what happens, that's what teachers do. Teachers know you're not of this and you're not aware of some existential teachers. You're not aware of what a teacher is. You're not aware, at, and I'm not saying you're not aware always, you're not aware now if you feel you don't know if you're an idea or not. If you don't know you're not an idea or not, you have no stability to even work with other realms. If you don't know who you are here, you're just going to be that balloon that was just let go and is just floating to the air and it's stuck in the ceiling, you know? And in a sense, you're not stuck in a ceiling because it's a limitless sky. You create the ceiling, so don't create a ceiling. You have infinite ability, you just need to let yourself show yourself what you know how to do. That's wisdom, guys. Let yourself show yourself by not even having the concept of try, but simply applying yourself to the moment and seeing what, it, what experience is expressed. And with this, guys, there's always greater findings from that. Thank you and much blessings.